Hey everyone, in this tutorial today, I'm going to explain to you how to customize your WordPress to restrict certain users from accessing certain parts of WordPress. So let's put this in a real life case scenario. You're a web designer, you've created a nice WordPress site, but you want to restrict your customer or your client from logging on and changing certain things. Yes, you might want them to be able to you know, add new pages or blog posts, but you don't really want them to getting into the theme and editing the theme and adding in codes and uploading plugins and updating WordPress because you probably, real, you probably know that sometimes plugins aren't compatible uh, with newer versions of WordPress and it can stuff things up if they do it themselves. So the best thing to do would be to restrict them. And yes, there are plugins available online that you can purchase that do achieve this. However, in my eyes, if I can code it myself and it doesn't take too long, why would I buy a plugin? And plugins, again, if there's too many plugins on the website, can bloat your WordPress, it can slow it down. Um, and for me, this is the best way to restrict users uh, from using certain features. So. To get started, what we're going to do is we are going to create a plugin, but we're not going to create a standard plugin. We're going to create a must use plugin. Now, WordPress has the ability to allow you to create plugins that can't be removed or uh, deactivated, and they are called must use plugins. Now, WordPress doesn't come with must use plugins set up, but you can easily do that. And to get started, we just need to go into our project and go into our WP content folder. And as you can see, there's plugins, themes, upgrade, uploads. We just need to create a new folder called mu-plugins. And inside this mu-plugins folder, we want to create a new file. And just call it whatever you want, but I'm going to call it mustuse.php. Now that that's installed, our website will check, uh, our WordPress admin section will check this uh, every time someone logs in or even when someone visits your website. So it can it can work on both the admin and the, the front end. So with this uh, with the current setup I have, I have two users. One, which is the administrator. That was the first user that was set up on this uh, WordPress installation and it's user ID one. And then I have user ID two, which is the test user, which would be my client. But I don't want my client to have access to everything on here. And so I'm going to restrict that. But I want access as the admin to everything. As you can see on the right hand side, we're actually both administrators. But what this uh, client or this test user will realize is that even though they are the administrator, they won't have as many options on the left hand side. And that's just to, I guess, simplify things for your client. So they don't see a whole lot of options on the left hand side. And also it gives you the ability to customize your WordPress when you give it to your client. So it looks like more of a custom job. So if we go back to this must use plugin, firstly, we need to open the PHP tags and we have to give the plugin a name. So let's just uh, open these tags and do plugin name. I'm going to just call it custom functions and the description uh, plugin that holds custom functions. And the author is me, Mr. Digital. You don't need to put this in there, but I think it's always good to just put that in there just to uh, credit yourself, I guess. <laughs> now, the first thing we need to do is we need to find out what the user's ID is so that we can apply these rules to the specific user. And in this case, what we want to do is we want to find out if the user ID is not one, which is the main administrator user. And if it isn't one, then to apply these rules. So the first thing we need to do is create a function and I'm going to call the function control. You can call it whatever you'd like. And I want to then find out what the user ID is. So user ID is get current user ID, which is a WordPress function to find out the user's ID. And then if the user ID is not equal to one, apply these rules. And then the last thing we need to do is we need to add an action to run this function. Control is the name of the actual function, and this is the part of WordPress that we went where we want it to load it. So on initialization. 
Okay, so you'll notice now if we go back to the uh, dashboard, nothing really has changed. I'm going to log in as the user now. So if we go to my profile, I'm actually the test user, the client. So what I want to do is I want to restrict the client from accessing the media page or the uploads page. That can be done. So let's create a new function underneath and we'll call it function remove menu pages. And we're going to remove menu page. Now, the easiest way to do this would be to go onto uh, Chrome or whichever browser you use, right click on the link that you want to restrict. So let's just do uh, media, right click on media and go inspect element. And you'll notice that it links to upload.php. So easy, remove menu page, upload.php save and then we just need to make that action this function to work only within these rules so let's do add action admin head my remove oh sorry remove menu pages so it's going to only apply this function if the rule matches where the user is not equal to one so if we refresh this now as a client you'll notice that the uploads has now gone and then i want to restrict plugins Okay, so right click plugins.php, easy. Let's go back here, remove menu page, plugins.php, refresh. Oops, my bad. Sorry about that. I missed the semicolon there. Refresh it again. There we go. Plugins is gone now. We want to remove appearance as well. Actually, we want to keep appearance, but we want to remove themes and editor. Now to do that, because it's actually a sub menu, we need to do remove, uh, remove sub menu page. And then we need to specify, sorry about that. Uh, themes.php which is the main link and then the sub link which is themes.php and that will be for editing themes or sorry adding new themes so if we go back refresh appearance you'll notice that there's no themes anymore and then we just want to remove editor as well so let's do that let's just copy this keep the same main link and then just do editor.php refresh it You'll notice now appear. Oh, sorry, no editor is still there. If we right click and inspect the element, you'll know it's called, it's called theme editor. So let's go back and change this to theme dash editor. Now let's go back and refresh the page. And theme ed or editor is gone now. But let's just say if we want to get rid of appearance completely, what we can do is just do uh, remove menu page themes.php and that's the main link refresh that let's remove settings as well uh, so it's called options dash general remove menu page options dash general dot php that's gone uh, I don't know if tools is really necessary for, for people who aren't very technical with WordPress or even technical people. I don't know if it's useful. So let's just remove that to clean it up. So that's remove menu page tools.php. Beautiful. And uh, yeah, that's nice and clean for the client now. They can still add pages. They can still add posts. Um, and they can view users. Now with users, you probably want, um, uh, maybe uh, you, you may or may not want to, but you, you might want to hide the actual uh, user, the main admin user. So it looks like they're the main administrator. So there's a, there's a workaround with that. Now I found this snippet online. Um, now I'm not going to type it because it's quite long, but I will include, include this uh, function in the, uh, uh, in an attachment with this video so you can download it and then you can edit it however you want. Okay, so what we'll do is we will go and create a new function further down and just paste this function in here. Now, 
uh, it's a bit to type so that's why I've done this and I'm going to grab the action for this function and just paste it in here. Now if we refresh that you'll notice that now the main administrator with user ID 1 is no longer visible which uh, gives that user the, the idea that there is no other users on the site or there's no administrator user. And also you'll notice that here there's a count. So let's remove the count and I'm going to copy that. It's a bit of CSS that needs to be changed. It's a little CSS tweak and I'll just paste that in there and that's going to hide the user count. So they don't know that there's two users, there's only one. Okay, so that's uh, another little simple thing to do. Now, maybe I don't want the user to uh, uh, update WordPress. I want to do it myself. To do that, all you have to do is create another function, which I will just paste into here. Again, it's a bit to type, and I don't want you to have to type it out with me. Just paste that in. And uh, now that we have done that, uh, my bad, I accidentally pasted this over by accident. So this is the actual function here and we just want to grab this function and put it up here underneath um, hiding the users function. Um, we can also do other things like hiding the help tab on the right hand side here, top right. You know, you might want to just customize WordPress, make it look like a really good custom solution. So to do that, I'll just paste this other snippet of code in there. And I'll grab this rule here, or sorry, the function call here, and paste it up here, hiding the help. Refresh it. Now the, the help is hidden. Um, what else can we do? Uh, okay, so when the user is on the dashboard, you'll notice that there's all these things here, at a glance, quick draft, etc. You know, sometimes it looks really messy because there's so many things on there and it can confuse people. What you can do is you can actually remove all of those things or you can remove some of them. So let's create a new function, remove dashboard widgets. And let's say we want to remove quick draft. Okay, to remove quick draft, uh, what we want to do is, I'm going to paste it in again, remove a meter box, uh, dashboard quick press, and hit save. Now if we refresh that, actually, my bad, that's not the right one. Actually, yes it is. I just noticed that I didn't call the function in this. So what we'll do is we'll just do add action, WP, dashboard, setup, remove dashboard widgets, and refresh it. Now quick draft should go away now, which is good. Um, and as you can see, you can't even select it here. And then let's remove WordPress news and events. Um, now to remove news and events, if we right click on here and just see what the, what it's called. It's called dashboard primary. So what we would do then is we would remove the meet, copy this, remove meter box and do dashboard underscore primary, I guess, and save it. There we go, gone. Um, maybe activity as well, probably don't need activity. So let's just uh, see here, activity, activity widget. It's called dashboard activity, easy. Copy, paste, dashboard activity. Refresh. Okay, no, that didn't work. Okay, uh, let's have a look. Okay, we need to change this to normal and refresh it. And there we go. So now we have a clean dashboard. All we have is at a glance there. You can obviously remove at a glance if you'd like. Um, now let's go back to screen options and see there's welcome to WordPress as well. Um, you can remove the welcome panel. So to do that, you just have to do remove action, welcome panel, uh, WP welcome panel. 
if we refresh it now, that's gone. There's not, there's not even a welcome panel availability there. Okay. Um, now, there are some other cool things you can do, and I'm not going to go through them all because this will just be a huge tutorial, but hopefully you get the drift of how you can restrict users uh, and customize WordPress to make it more of a, a, a custom solution for you and your clients. Um, if I go back as the actual administrator user and refresh, you'll notice as the administrator user, I can still see everything. So that's cool. I can update WordPress, I can do everything on there, install plugins, etc. But your client can only do these certain things. So that's it. I hope my tutorial has helped you and I'm sorry I have made mistakes here and there, but hopefully it gives you a rough idea of how to make it work. And if you have any questions, just comment below. Thanks and have a great day.